Hello, and welcome to Global Data Themes Instant Insights. At Global Data, we define a theme as something that keeps a CEO awake at night, as businesses that invest in important themes will succeed, and those that don't will fail. Hello, and welcome to Instant Insights. I'm Emma Taylor, and today I'll be talking to Nicholas Wyatt from Global Data Travel and Tourism, following the International Hotel Technology Forum, which we both attended last week. We'll be discussing some trends from the conference. Uh, so if you missed it, keep listening to get a snapshot of, of some of the key takeaways. So Nick, what, what do you think was some a key trend that, that you uh, have taken away from the conference? What was emerging there? Yeah, first of all, uh, good morning, Emma. Thanks for uh, having me on. Um, yeah, we were both there. It was a, a really good, uh, interesting conference. I thought there were a lot of interesting sessions, but there were a couple of sort of key trends or themes running through, you know, multiple sessions. And I think one of them straight away was around, you know, big data, data collection, personalization strategies. Um, yeah. That that was big, you know, personalizing offerings, personalizing marketing, personalizing other forms of communication. All of those things came up, you know, consistently. But I think the key message that I took away from many of those sessions was if you are going to uh, collect data and analyze it and then try to use it, that you need to have a really clear plan and strategy for what it is you want to do with it. Um, yeah. don't do it for the sake of doing it. And what analogy that sort of one of the speakers gave, which I thought was quite interesting because I've never personally thought of it in this way, was she described uh, data as being like uh, water on the Earth's surface, where she said sort of 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Only a small percentage of that water is fit for consumption. So. Yeah. She was making the same point about data, like, you know, there's a lot of data out there. You can collect a lot of this data, but there's only some of it that is going to be useful. And that came up again, like I say, repeatedly. And people were talking about, you know, have a clear plan, have a clear strategy of not just collecting the data, how you're going to clean it, how you're going to analyze it to make sense of it so that you can then derive some form of actionable insight from it. And I thought that one of the really interesting pieces that one speaker sort of talked about was outcome based uh, and, or an outcome based strategy where you think, first of all, like what is the outcome we want from our big data or our personalization strategy? And then almost kind of work backwards from there to say, what data do we need to collect? What do we need to do with that data? So for me, the number one key message that I took away from multiple speakers, both from the sort of hospitality side and the tech vendor side was it's great to collect data it's great to have a personalization strategy but make sure that you have a good clear one and you know what you want to achieve with all of this data otherwise yeah. you're just collecting it and you'll have a large repository of data that you really can't do a whole lot of you know useful work with yeah I definitely got got that feeling as well there was there was a real uh, push for making sure the data is contextualized yeah as you said relevant um, there was also a lot of talk of making sure uh, you you can when possible uh, get get data in real time I thought that was quite interesting I think the real time piece has become sort of a, a big talking point in the last sort of two three four years um, a lot of people have wanted more and more up to the minute uh, data, you know, it could be access to things like reservations data, booking data, etc. Um, and actually, that was one of the speakers that talked about the model that they that you know help their clients with. Um, one of the key focuses of it was reducing the reliance on historical data um, mm. and using more real time or at least close closer to real time sort of information and data. I think the other thing which you also mentioned was was using that yeah data for personalization. I remember one speaker saying that um in a survey 86% of consumers said that personalization played a part in in their buying and that uh, it could increase uh, return on investment by 5 to 8 times. 
Um, but I think something that leads in quite nicely to, to something that that you presented on was on was on cybersecurity and and the relationship that has to personalization. Yeah, so that was obviously the session that sort of I personally presented uh, to the audience. Um, and the message there really was just, you know, if you are going to sort of embark on this this road of, of personalization and collecting sort of lots of data, um, then you need to protect it um, because there's a lot of personal, very personal data that's kind of flying around in the, the travel and tourism world, you know, names, addresses, passport numbers, you know, dates of birth, all sorts of things are there. So you really do need to protect this both from a reputational standpoint, because obviously, you know, any sort of breach would, you know, not put you in a favorable light with the person who's affected by it. But also from a regulatory standpoint, because, you know, we have seen fines um, handed out in the travel and tourism sector that are not insignificant um, from sort of, you know, information uh, commissioner's office and uh, et cetera, um, in relation to sort of GDPR breaches. So, yeah, that was kind of the key message really was you have to protect this data because unfortunately, obviously it is, you know, the hotel technology forum. Um, so we're talking about hotels there. Uh, unfortunately, hotels are quite heavily targeted um, because of the richness of the data that they that they have. Um, so investing in strong cybersecurity measures is an absolute must. You summarised that really well. You know, making sure that investment in personalization and 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 data collection comes hand in hand with an investment into cybersecurity posture. What other um, trends did you did you hear come out from the conference what were some sort of ongoing and uh repeated conversations i think that there's a couple of really that stand out for me one is and this comes up when you know i speak to people in the space you know all the time uh, and it, it came up at the conference as well is this slight sort of need to balance there's a balancing act around technology and human touch because Ultimately, hospitality is a human business. Um, you want to make sure that people are still being able to deal with people when they want to and need to. Um, so there's a balancing act between using technology to maybe streamline and improve certain processes, but not overdoing it to the point, you know, where people feel like I'm just dealing with self-service things here. Mm. There is a divide then, you know, as, as as we saw, Emma, you know, some of the speakers were from very high end hotel chains. Yeah. And they were they're acutely aware of this because in that space, people do expect a certain level of personal human service. Um, so, you know, the, for example, when we were talking about one of the sessions was talking about checking technology to, to streamline the checking process. And um, that gentleman was saying that in his hotel chain, there is absolutely no way they would ever want to run some sort of self-checking kiosk system because it is not what their guests expect because he was from a, a five-star hotel chain, you know, where people have very different expectations of what that checking process should look like. One of the sort of ideas that was put forward by a couple of people was if you can use technology to maybe streamline and improve some of the more sort of mundane services that some of the front office staff or frontline staff spend their time doing, that then actually frees those staff up to spend mm. more time with guests and provide a proper personal, you know, human touch service. And then sort of linked to that, I think the second thing that came up a lot at the conference, pretty much every um, sort of session that I, I sat in on mentioned this, is the issue with staffing. Uh, in the industry at the moment, there is a there is a, an issue with staffing shortages, um, and it's not really kind of confined to any one geographical region. This is a global phenomenon, um, and that was mentioned on numerous occasions by a number of people. So again, the sort of message there was: look at ways that you can utilize technology to perhaps you know make some of this a little bit easier, um, you know, and improve these uh, measures. Um, and processes so that you can then, you know, you are able to operate with a slightly uh, smaller group of uh, a group of staff because attracting and retaining them is proving very difficult. The ESG angle was it was probably the final big takeaway from it as well that came up. Obviously, there's been a lot of pressure um, 
on ESG that was used actually as one of the sort of arguments for moving more towards um, phone um, sort of unlocking doors with phones, etc. Because you would need less plastic, mm. with all these you know plastic cards and and whatnot. Um, so that was sort of mentioned, but then, you know, there was a lot of stuff around food waste, wasn't there? And, uh, making sure that, you know, the right food is on offer, um, for the yeah. guests and, and how you could maybe use data to better understand that sort of thing, to understand water consumption, all these sorts of, uh, issues were discussed as well. I think ESG and then the ethics, um, of you know, big data and the big data collection were, were also a couple of key takeaways. And that was, you know, what your session was on, wasn't it? It was on, you know, sort of ethics of, of big data and personalization, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I uh, spoke on data, data ethics and AI um, ethics generally, and then how that might be what the implications for the travel and tourism industry might be. I mean, that was a recurring topic, wasn't it? I think there there was only a couple speakers in the whole of those three days that didn't mention generative AI and chat GPT. That was a real ongoing theme, I think. And people really wanting to know exactly how this new disruptive technology um, would affect the industry specifically. Yeah, so I tried to talk a little bit like that. I felt like I was changing my presentation because so much was happening right up until uh, right before I, I I spoke. I guess the main implications and, and use cases that I found that, that this new generative AI models might have for the travel and tourism industry were to do with customer service, um, operations, uh, you know, streamlining, even things like housekeeping, uh, it could be used for um marketing so obviously writing copy it's very good at things like that also analyzing customer behavior and preferences from from reviews or uh or even helping with the personalization which we've mentioned uh quite a few times yeah i think that will be an ongoing conversation yeah chat gpt and and generative ai in general was mentioned in pretty much every sort of session my impression of it was that there's a lot of buzz around it at the moment. People are excited about it, excited about the sort of potential and are examining it or investigating its use. Uh, but it feels at the moment like people are still trying to really find their way with it and understand where, you know, or what tasks it can best help with. Um, mm. It felt to me a little bit like people are still very much in the exploration stage of trying to understand where it best, best fits, how it can best benefit the business and i'm sure that you know that will become clearer over time and, and people will probably start to develop some some quite good focused um strategies around the use of uh generative ai yeah i think people are so worried about falling behind and you know not keeping up with their competitors but i think there is definite dangers with with trying to adopt this technology at such early stages you know there's so much we still need to to learn a bit around the technology and, and what uh, types of regulations are going to come out of it. So I think uh, that will say something for taking taking your time. But uh, yeah, well, thank you, Nick. I think that's all we have time for. But thank you for those instant insights. Uh, thanks for listening. And from us in Thematic Intelligence, see you next time.